Hello! <laughs> so today's little tutorial is going to be a makeup glasses look. Now I legitimately am not blind, um, obviously, but I do have pretty bad vision when I do not have my contacts in. So when I say I have bad vision, I mean I need my mirror up here on my face, so you'll probably see my mirror in this tutorial. And it means that doing uh, detailed makeup, like a very sharp winged eyeliner, is not going to be happening. Um, because if I did, it would take forever because I'd constantly be lifting my glasses up and down and then having to get close and then having to like push away to see everything. Um, so you can definitely do winged eyeliner when you wear glasses. But one of my favorite looks to do when I have glasses is to do just a really nice smoky blown out just a nice smoky blown out kind of dark look and then a really bright bold lip because I feel like it still can be dramatic and fun but it's actually really easy and does not take a lot of time to do. Some tips and tricks uh, if you do want to get like a cat eye effect and you're wearing glasses and you don't want to do winged eyeliner these work for if you're having glasses on or if you're not are wearing for example falsies that really have the lashes that are short here and then lengthen as they go out towards your eye because those are naturally going to give you kind of a you know just snatched eye look and then another thing too which you can do which i'm not going to be doing in this video but i could do it for another one is concentrate your darker colors towards the outer v of your eye and that will also give you more of a cat eye look um like i said not doing that in this video but definitely ideas for another glasses video so Without further ado, let us go ahead and get started. So to start off, we're going to take our glasses off and become blind and then look at the mirror and pull it really, really, really close to my face um, because we are going to start off with the eyeshadow and we are going to prime our eyelids using the NARS concealer. For me, this is in the color light one and then just dab it all over the eyeballs and blend it out. I like using a BUD blender, sponge, insert, whatever for this part. And then I'm going to set the eyes with the Besame Violet Translucent Powder. The reason I'm using a translucent powder is because the palette that we're going to be using today doesn't have an eyeshadow that actually has a color that I can use. They are all too dark, so when in doubt, use a translucent powder. And then the palette we are going to use is the Morphe Dare to Create 39A palette. I absolutely love this and all the colors in it. Um, some of them are a little bit redundant, but overall it is a phenomenal palette. And the color we are first going to go into is this very large, nice light transition color. And we're going to take it on a huge, huge fluffy brush this is the Morphe E30, and we are just going to be distributing that evenly throughout the entire crease. Since I'm doing kind of like an overall smoky, grungy, blown out look, I'm going to apply the transition color um, pretty evenly throughout the crease, and I'm going to make sure that I connect it at the outside of the eye. And what I mean by that is that I am bringing part of that transition color and I'm sweeping it onto the outer V of my eye and then keeping that color all the way to the inter. Then we're gonna go in with this nice, more neutral tone brown color and on a fluffy brush but slightly smaller one, I'm gonna be using the Morphe E27. We are going to be taking that color and we are applying it to the crease. Since we're using a larger brush, a lot of it is still going to get on the lid, but I want that because we're building up color, so I like how that actually looks, so it's not a bad thing. The lid doesn't need to stay clean for this look. And we are mimicking exactly where we put the transition color, except we're just keeping the color lower on the eye. One of the nice things about having a large fluffy brush for this is it is going to kind of blend it. And to blend it even more, I'm going back in with the first brush that we used and without putting any more product on it, blending them together. Now put the glasses back on 
and we are going to make sure that everything looks good to go and even and then we're going to take them back off and we're going to go in with this dark brown color right here that has kind of a nice uh, purple undertone to it it complements if you've got green eyes um, it complements the green in it really nicely and on a very small brush this is the e16 it's kind of like a super tiny dense blending brush we're going to put that dark brown color and to do that i'm using stippling motions because at first we're just laying this color into the crease and using stippling motions i feel like helps to blend out darker colors better than just laying it down and then trying to blend out a harsh line if you apply the color at first with like a technique that's already blending it it makes it way easier to blend a darker color um, into the crease and everything and now that we have got that dark brown color in the crease we are going to go in with this is uh, just an elf I forget what they call it but it's just like an elf kind of flat eyeshadow brush and we are going to pack on the color since this is a flat brush we are going to use it to pack on that dark brown color and this is just going to one give us that really nice smoky look on the eyelid and because of the kind of brush we'll be able to pack on a crap ton of color take your time doing this and just feeling it out um and yeah kind of the more pigment the better for this then I'm going to go back in with that tiny blending brush and I am going to go over the edge between the color we just packed on and blend it in to that same shadow that we already blended into the crease and as you can see this is going to make just a way more easy and kind of seamless blend from that dark color into our other transition colors and then just go back in and pack on that dark brown color until you get it to the intensity that you want. Then put those glasses back on again and make sure everything looks even. We are good to go, so taking them back off. And then to do our face, we are going to start off with the No Pore Problem. And for the primer, we're just going to be using one pump, which to be honest actually ended up being way too much. This is a pore filling, and it doesn't say mattifying primer, but I did not like how this mixed with the foundation that I used. I thought it made it really dry, and I think it's because I used too much primer. And the foundation that we are using is the Maybelline one. This is the new one that has a pump, which I really like, and it's the Maybelline... What do they call it? But anyways, <laughs> it just says up to 24 hours on it. And I'm in the color Fair Porcelain, which looks really light, but I have a lot of redness in my face, so it covers that. And to apply it, we're just going to take that one pump. And with a flat brush, we are going to go ahead and smear it all over the face. This is a matte formula, so I would not recommend applying it how I did where I smeared it all over my face and then I blended it in with a sponge. I would work in sections on this because in particular with the primer that I had on, this foundation ended up drying down really fast. So I would work in sections when you do this. And um, yep, just go ahead and blend it out with a sponge and it looks a little white on me in part because of the light but i also kind of just matches my neck a little bit i'm just really white but i have a lot of red in my face so yeah foundations never really match me that well but we're gonna rock the slightly ghost look today and then with a whatever is your favorite concealer we are going to go in with that and a flat concealer brush in a color that's normally like one to two shades lighter than your actual true match. And we're going to conceal under the eyes to cover up dark bags and also just to highlight a little bit and brighten under the eye. And then just blend it in with a sponge. Then go ahead and highlight the forehead and the chin. I do these steps separately because the Tarte Shape Tape Concealer dries really quickly, and if I do it all at once, I feel like it makes it a lot harder to blend out. And then we're going to set all of our 
foundation and concealer using the Maybelline Better Skin Powder. And just press that all over your face. I like this because it's not a mattifying powder, so it helps set everything, but it won't give you a cake face if you already feel like your skin is kind of on the drier side. And for the brows, I'm just going to be using my brow gel, and at first I'm like back combing the hairs on my eyes to give them kind of a fluffy texture, and then using the spoolie, I'm then sweeping them kind of up so the hairs go in an up direction and then putting them kind of back in the natural direction. I know it seems kind of like combing them in the opposite direction just to put them back where they were, but it's going to give the brow a little bit of a more lifted shape and it's also going to help fill in all kind of the sparse areas. Now, highlights the next step. So I'm using the pixie one that I like a lot because it gives kind of a natural glow. And we're just going to be putting it on the high part of our cheek today. And for blush, we are going to be using a ColourPop blush. I really like these. They're very pigmented. Um, so I would say be careful with that when you first go in with them. And I'm just going to be applying this at first on the apple of the cheek and then just kind of working it up a little bit. I'm dispersing it a little bit more widely than I would for some looks, but it just gives a very kind of like nice, natural, yes, kind of natural uh, flush back to the face. And I'm actually going to put my glasses back on because I needed to make sure that the blush was even. And I also wanted to blend it out a little bit more so that it wasn't looking quite as harsh. And yep, now that that's good, the glasses are going back off again because it is time to finish the eyes, which I'm going to dip into the Kat Von D Shade and Light palette because it has a white, which the Morphe palette didn't. And I'm just going to be dipping back into the white because I want to use a matte white to do the under brow bone highlight. You can use a shimmer for this, but I think when you're doing a look where everything is matte on the eye, like what we did, it's best to keep your under, under the eyebrow slash brow bone highlight in a matte color as well. And then going back into the Morphe palette in that dark, dark brown color, we are going to take that on a small pencil brush. This is the e.l.f. pencil brush that I absolutely love. It's great for smoking out under the eye. And we are going to do exactly that. We are just going to run it back and forth on the lower lash line to really smoke out this look. And I'm bringing the color in to where my lash line stops. So I'm just following the natural lash line that I have. And as soon as my lashes stop, that's where I'm stopping, where I'm putting the color. And we're really going to build this color up and take it a bit lower. I'm going for a super smoky look. And to blend it out even more, we're going to go back in with that like color we use, the light color we used for our transition. And on a small blending brush, we are going to go over that dark brown color and we're going to blend out the bottom of it but then you also see me swooping the brush on the outer part of the V to connect the bottom part with the top part. Then to highlight we are going to go in with the highlighter we used on our cheeks and just a fat pencil brush and we are going to use this to highlight. The reason I didn't pull from the Morphe palette is it didn't have a shade light enough for an inner corner highlight that I would do normally for this look. That's that's kind of the biggest downside for me is it's a gorgeous palette and you can do so many things with it, but it's missing a couple light shades for me. I wish that they had taken out one or two of the more redundant mid-tone, like middle range brown colors that they have and given us a couple more highlight colors in the palette. And then we are going to tight line as well as fill in our waterline with black pencil. This is the Rimmel Gel Pencil, so just going to be doing that. And when you tight line for this, you want to make sure that you tight line at the bottom corner of the eye. 
because you want that black line to really follow the whole upper part of your eye otherwise you'll be able to see the skin and it'll create kind of like a difference between where we have the dark eye shadow and our lash line for a good smoky look you want to make that disappear then throw on your mascara, whichever one is your favorite. I'm using the Too Faced Better Than Sex. And if you are a lashes gal, then go ahead and throw on your lashes. Then we are going to put the glasses back in place for a final time, uh, as long as everything is even. So check that everything is even now that you've got your vision back. And when it is, we can go ahead and put on our lipstick. Originally, I know I had said um, that I was going to do a dark lip for this, but I got this new Dose of Colors lipstick that I really wanted to try, so I'm trying it. But instead of using kind of like a neutral pinky color like I am, you can definitely do whatever lip you want with this kind of look because it's a neutral enough eyeshadow where it'll pull off anything. But this is where if you have like a super fun red or those orangey reds that are really popular, where it would be a perfect time to uh, put that on as well. The color that I'm using from Dose of Colors is called Rosebud, and I really like it. It's a very pretty mauvey pink. It compares a lot to Patina by uh, Stila Liquid Lipsticks, except while the formula is incredibly comfortable, I had to do two layers of this. When I only did one layer of it, I found it to be way too patchy. With two layers, it layered totally fine. The formula looked great, but I did have to layer it. And that concludes this look, ladies and gentlemen. We are officially done. And I'm trying to angle my face so that you can see how this looks. Um, with the lights on, I know you see the glare in my glasses, so it's really hard to see how the makeup looks 100%. I tried turning the lights off and it just made things way too dark, but you can kind of see it when I look over. So we've just got the nice, smoky look and then the fun eyes it makes the eyes pop and look really good with the glasses and yeah i hope that you liked this video if you did please give a thumbs up and subscribe have a good day night evening wherever you are and i'll see you in the next video